The scribble effect is found under the generate category and it needs something to generate on top of. So I'm gonna make a new solid layer and I'll call it scribble. Click okay and then apply that effect to it. Now by default, it's not going to generate anything. We're just seeing through to my background at this green solid back here. What we need is a mask or multiple masks for this effect to generate on top of, inside of, or around. So let's just make a quick example. I'm gonna grab the pen tool and just make a path. I'm gonna say my scribble type is set to single mask. I could change it to all masks, all masks using modes or none, but we'll get to those in a bit. I'm gonna leave it at single mask for now and then choose my mask one that I just drew and immediately I'm gonna get this texture showing up within that mask. Now the reason it's showing up within it is because the fill type is set to inside, but we have a lot of options here. So I could change this to centered edge and then it's going to follow that path like a stroke. I could change it to inside edge and that will go on the inside of the path, outside edge, left edge or right edge, which kind of just looks like inside or outside. If I add another mask, this time I'll just make a rectangle and choose all masks, it's going to apply to both of them. I don't have to choose a mask this way. And if I switch it from right edge to outside edge, you can see that it's now connecting a line between this open path. And that's really the difference between inside and outside edge and left edge and right edge. Left and right edge is meant for open paths and inside and outside edge is meant for closed paths. Now there's one more scribble type and that's all mask using modes. And what this means is it's going to combine these scribbles in the same way that the masks are interacting down here. So let me change this to inside and go ahead and close this path. I'll just finish it off. And down here in my masks, they're both set to add. But if I change mask one to subtract and move it below the rectangle, let me just label these quick. This is the rectangle and this is the blob. The order of operations for masks in After Effects is from the top down. So everything below this gets combined with what's before it. So if this path is set to subtract and we have scribble set to all masks using modes, this subtract mode is going to subtract from this mask path. And we see that reflected in the texture. So I can modify this path however I want and it's going to interact the same way that masks would with fills on a solid. I could also change it to say intersect and now it's wherever these two paths are overlapping that will be stylized in this scribbled effect. All right, let's simplify this and just go back to single mask. We'll use that blob mask and I'll just get rid of the rectangle for now. Change this back to add and then take a look at the edge options. They're all grayed out right now because our fill type is set to inside. But if we put it on centered edge, so it's just aligned to our path now, we open up all of these possibilities. So first of all, we have the edge width, which is just like a stroke width for that scribbled texture. We have end cap and join properties, which is just like in a shape layer stroke, round butt and projecting. If I opened up this path by right clicking on it, going to mask and shape path, and then unchecking closed, and I'll change the end cap to butt, don't laugh, and now it's a straight edge on that end. And I could do the same thing for join. I could change that to say bevel. And if I got rid of the Bezier handles that I have here, now it's going to be a straight edge there. Change it back to round and it's rounded off. Change it to miter and it's going to protrude out at a nice corner. But all of that is disregarded if I've added these Bezier handles. Let me undo back to where we can see that miter and turn the miter limit down. You see that if I get to a certain point, it's going to cut that off. So basically this is giving us a tolerance for how steep the angle has to be for it to get that sharp corner. So if I made it in a really extreme angle here, this one's getting cut off, but this one here is not. This one is, if I added another point, got rid of that roundness, then we'll see a bunch of different join types. Next we have start slash end apply to. Now this is talking about two other properties down here, which is start and end. And this is exactly like trim paths. If I turn my end value down, it's going to trim it off. Or if I increase the start value, it'll do the same thing. Now with it aligned to an edge like this, if I change my start end apply to value from scribble result to mask path, then it's basically going to stretch that texture along the path rather than trim the actual scribbled texture. Let me zoom in so you can see nice and clearly that this is moving the texture around whereas changing this to scribbled result will actually trim that scribble back and forth within that texture. So that's the difference there. All right, that's everything for the edge type options. I'm gonna change this back to inside and close this mask path off again and why don't we just round everything out so it's a nice blobby shape. 
I'll close up the edge options and next is the color. And this is just the fill for the actual scribbled texture. So you can make this any color you'd like. I'll make mine this yellow color. We have opacity, which does exactly what you would think. But next up is the angle. And this is where it gets interesting because we can control how this scribble texture is actually being applied. So I could change that angle to be more like this and then turn up the stroke width or turn it down to make them thinner lines. If I turn it up too far, it's all gonna just kind of go together. Now that might be a nice way to be able to animate it from thin lines into a filled shape, but I wanna still see some in-between spots here. So I'm gonna go into my stroke options and turn up the spacing. As I increase this, you can see that there will be less density between each line. But if I do it too far, then it just turns into kind of this back and forth sine wave. In fact, if I really crank it up, that's exactly what it's doing. So on second thought, let's turn that back down so that it's a pretty tight spacing. Let me just reset it to its default and then turn that stroke width down as well so we still see that texture. Next up in the stroke options, we have curviness. If I turn this up or down, this will make those lines, those zigzags, more or less curved. And actually, let's turn that spacing way back up so we can see exactly what's happening here. Turning the curviness down to where it was, which I believe was around 5%, there we go, gives you just a little bit of curve between each one of these scribbles. But if I turn that up, it really rounds it all off. We also have a curviness variation, which is just randomness for the curviness. So let me turn that curviness back down to five and the variation way up and then turn my spacing back down so you can see that this will generate a much more chaotic looking scribble. So maybe that's a little too much, but you can play around with that to get something unique. We have path overlap, which is basically an offset paths for that mask but it's only on the axis of the angle you've set it to up here. So we'll rotate with whatever value you type in here. We also have path overlap variation, so we can give that a little bit more randomness as well. And then we've already looked at start and end, and this looks a little bit different with the fill type being set to inside, but it's exactly the same as trim paths. It gives us the ability to trim this on or off. Now right here we have a grayed out checkbox that says fill paths sequential, and this is for if we have more than one mask. So let me switch this back to all masks, and I'll add another one right here. And let me turn the curviness variation down just a little bit and reset the path overlap back down to zero. Now that fill path sequentially is checked, it's going to fill one of my masks before filling the other. If I uncheck that, then it's going to do both at the same time. Next, we have wiggle type and it's set to smooth. And we haven't played back at all, but this actually is an animated effect. So you can see that this is randomly wiggling all of these lines which is really nice. It does it in a very organic way, and we have lots of controls for it. By default, it's set to smooth, but I could change it to jumpy, and then it will update much less often, basically lowering the frame rate, but also making it a little bit more random. Or we could change it to static, and then it won't animate at all. Now, let me put it back to smooth, and we have wiggles per second, it's set to 10. I'm working at 24 frames per second, so if I turn this up to 24, then it's going to wiggle pretty drastically because every single frame will be basically a unique wiggle. Or I could turn this down to six, a quarter of that, and it will go much slower. And this applies also to jumpy. So if I wanted this to be going at half my frame rate, I could say change it to 12, and now it's going at 12 frames per second. Or I could change it to 24 if I want it on every frame. We also have a random seed, which just randomizes that randomness giving us a unique point to start on for any given frame. We could also use this on the static mode if we wanted to keyframe this or add an expression to generate this at a very specific rate. And then finally we have composite, which is set to on transparent, but I could change this to on original image, which in this case is just a solid, and the masks that I've drawn are set to add, but if I change them to none, then we'll see that solid behind them. I could also change this to reveal original image, and now the texture is going to be used as a mat for that layer behind it. Again, with those masks set to add, it's cutting it off. So I'd wanna change that to none to be able to see that texture outside of it. But using the reveal original image would allow you to use a texture to give these lines a bit more grit. In fact, if I just go over here and grab this photo of some concrete, and I got this photo from Unsplash from Annie Spratt, so thank you to Annie. I'll copy the masks as well as the effect to that layer, turn off the solid for a second, and change that composite mode to reveal original image, and now we're gonna see that texture through those lines. And I could change the blend mode to say multiply for it to blend on top of my background color a little bit better, and I could add maybe a curves effect 
before Scribble and just crush the contrast a little bit so that it has more texture to it. And now I have a very gritty, grungy, textured Scribble, and I can very quickly change the way that it looks, maybe just by going in to the angle and rotating it a bit, turning the stroke width down, going into the stroke options and turning the spacing down. This does increase render time, but it gives a very nice looking effect. And now I have something much more textured. And if I change this back to jumpy, not only is it textured, it's also animated, which is just fantastic. So let's say that you wanted to apply this effect to maybe some text. So I'll start by just typing out some text and I'll make sure that it's nice and bold. Actually, let's choose a different font, make it nice and big, and I'm going to right click on it, go to create and say create masks from text. That will make a solid layer and apply all of these outlined masks to it. And then I'll just go into the masks, select that, copy it, and then paste it right here. So they now exist on the photo. And because I have all masks set in my scribble type, it's going to apply the same treatment we already had on top of that text, still maintaining all of these non-destructive controls. So I can turn up that stroke width a little bit to make that a little bit more solid and definitely making sure to change all of the mask modes to none. So I'm gonna select all of them, change it to none, and now that scribble bleeds out beyond the text layers. Now, I might wanna turn that down a little bit. My path overlap variation is turned up pretty high, but if I turn that back a little bit, now we just get this nice crunchy edge. And actually I lost the hole in that O, so I need to go find that and change it to subtract. Now I do lose that textured edge in that instance. And that's just a side effect of using the reveal original image composite mode. If I change this back to on transparent and take the blend mode off, then I can change this from all masks to all masks using modes and it goes crazy. But if I change all these back to difference, then we're gonna get that textured edge even on those inside holes. All right, I'll undo back to where we were just a second ago. And from here, I could just animate this end property. I'll set a keyframe, press U to show it and then go forward about a second, turn it down to zero and then play this back and the text is scribbled on. Now you can make that last as long as you want. You could easy ease it and just increase the duration of that write on, but it's a very cool looking effect and has a lot of possibilities for complex looking animations without all that much effort. But that's everything you need to know about the scribble effect. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.